In the past 24 hours, Sri Lankans have experienced a massive hike in fuel prices, seen a new cabinet sworn in and heard promises of constitutional reform. The catalyst for all this? The country's worst ever economic crisis since independence in 1948. A crisis that's left Sri Lankans short of medicines, fuel, electricity and above all, food. The country is running out of foreign exchange to pay for these essential imports. The blame for most of this is falling on economic mismanagement by the government of President Gotabaya Rajapaksha. He's resisted calls to resign and on Monday he appointed a new cabinet. This is what he told them. I believe we should have gone to the International Monetary Fund much earlier. Not providing agrochemicals to farmers is also a mistake. We will now give fertilizer to our farmers once again. People are suffering because of the economic crisis. And I deeply regret it. Now that reference to farming, just one of a series of missteps by the president's administration. DW correspondent Manira Chaudhary was in Sri Lanka to get a sense of the other government measures that prompted this countrywide crisis. Facing acute economic distress and the wrath of its people, the Sri Lankan government finds itself in a tough spot. The country has built up excessive debt and has run out of the money needed to provide its people with essential commodities. But how did such a situation come about? Economist Ganeshan Vignaraja says the government's policies did not yield the growth they hoped for. Over the past few years, Sri Lanka has borrowed heavily for investing in infrastructure development, such as ports, roads, railways, and other types of projects. These projects have been relatively low return and has imposed an, a cost on the country. Vignaraja adds that the pandemic and Russia's war in Ukraine have worsened the blow. But the policy missteps by the current government are what really pushed Sri Lanka over the edge. He says their biggest mistake was the far-reaching tax cuts implemented in 2019, depriving the government budget of sizable revenue. He also points to their ill-fated attempt to rapidly switch from chemical to organic fertilizers. Uh, this had a negative impact on food production, uh, and also productivity, uh, which fell in agriculture and is partly responsible for the present food shortages that we have. Ordinary Sri Lankans are the ones suffering now. Soaring food prices, lengthy power cuts and hours spent queuing at fuel stations, sometimes returning empty-handed, are adding to the frustration. The healthcare system is also under pressure hit by supply shortages and substantial price hikes for medicines. But economist Vignaraja says he is cautiously optimistic the situation can improve if the right steps are taken at the right time. Restructuring Sri Lanka's debts through proper negotiations, cutting expenditures and long-term structural reforms to attract more foreign trade and investment. He says the measures are crucial to reassure the disappointed youth of the country. There is a massive queue outside the passport office of Sri Lankans trying to get passports. All the foreign embassies are inundated by people wanting to migrate. This will be uh, tragic for Sri Lanka if, if we have our youthful population not willing to be in this country and contribute to its future. Vignaraja says times may get tougher before getting better. For now, young Sri Lankans are taking to the streets as far as the eye can see demanding change and hope for the future. And this is what many of those in the streets have to say about the crisis that's hitting their country. We are at the protest uh, supporting all Sri Lankans, supporting our nation, uh, because it is, uh, we, it is something we should do. It is for our future, for our kids' future. It is for, uh, for a better life. Uh, because we are we are going backwards. I'm coming here to save our country from this corruption uh, politicians. I came here to show my support for the people who are doing the protest, and also I believe.
that uh, we need to do our part to stop this corruption. Last year it was we suffering from corona. This year we are suffering from economic crisis. The fuel is not there and kerosene is not there. Dollar is not there. Gas is not there. We have a lot of problems for Sri Lanka. Not good. No, no uh, rice and curry. And joining me now for more is Amantha Pereira. He's a researcher at Australia's CQ University in Melbourne. Amantha, a 64% hike in diesel prices, a shortage of food, essential items. I mean, what are people back home telling you? What is daily life like for Sri Lankans now? So if I were to capture daily life in one image, yesterday night, the Sri Lankan government relaxed face mask laws, where it said that people could now stop wearing face masks unless they're traveling in public transport and in indoor settings. As soon as that message came out, uh, doctors and others started putting out messages on social media saying they were beseeching. They were saying, please do not stop wearing your face mask because you may get sick and we have run out of medicine. That is how desperate the situation back home is. Uh, people are waiting for medicine. People are waiting in queues for fuel. The price of bread, the price of a loaf of bread went up by 30% overnight. So these queues are getting longer. These prices are getting higher. And there is no indication that the situation will be reversed anytime soon. And, and, the, and we're also seeing these near continuous protests against uh, the government uh, demanding that the president step down, although he's still sticking to his guns. Uh, Amantha, can the government offer people relief? Well, from what we've seen since the protest started in earnest in, uh, in early October, uh, April, the government has been trying to pretend or to show that they're doing something. But you, when you look at uh, what's happening on the ground, uh, the relief is not coming through to the people. The prices are not going down, the queues are not getting shorter, and the electricity cuts are still there. So uh, the short answer to that is that the government has been unable to deliver any kind of relief to the people. Will the government fall, Amantha? Well, the way the Sri Lankan constitution is, is very difficult to get rid of a sitting president. Uh, the president either has to resign or there's an impeachment process, which is quite complicated. So right now, the government can remain entrenched as long as the presidency is there. But it will be, and for all purposes, it is a hamstrung government. It, it, it has been uh, enacting cabinet reshuffles from the 1st of April. There is no relief. Uh, so the government can stay on, but it's going to be this bit of political uh, uh, attrition that is going to happen on the streets. And people are just going to be coming on to the streets till there is some relief. Uh, briefly, Amantha, if you can manage it, do you see this crisis changing Sri Lanka? Oh, it has already changed Sri Lanka. The way Sri Lankans uh, thought of their government the way Sri Lankans were making allowances for their governments in the past, it's all history now. From now on, what Sri Lankans have shown is that they will hold governments accountable. And if the governments don't deliver, they will make sure that they will force governments to deliver. The time of politicians being treated as semi-gods is gone, finished. Unfortunate circumstances there. Amantha Pereira, thank you so much for joining us today.